dear students, I am going to start a worksheet of solid materials. I have selected some latest past paper questions uh, for solid materials. I am Lal Narod from Ahmadiyya International School. So the question number one, a spring is suspended from a bar, a load of 2.5 Newton is added to the free end of the spring and the spring extended by 4 centimeters. The load is increased to 10 Newton and the spring extended by further x. So they will change the initial force from 2.5 to 10 Newton. So you can see that the spring extended by further distance x. So students you have to check very carefully the diagram. The extra extension they have given as x. The question asking what is the value of x, what is the value of x. They are not asking the complete extension, the extra extension part they are asking. So they have given four answers, we see how we can work this. So I am going to use this one, Hooke's law, that is f equals k delta x. The first we can use f equals k delta x for given 2.5 force and the extension we know 4 centimeters. In this case I am not going to convert centimeters to uh, meters because no need. If you convert also okay, but without converting we can do. So k will be 0 0.625 Newton per centimeters. So when the force is 10 Newton, again we can use the same equation delta x equals f over k force will be 10 spring constant will be 0 0.625, you get 16 centimeters. That is the total extension. The total extension will be the sum of x plus 4, so x will be 12. So answer will be here c part, that is extra extension will be 12 centimeters. We we'll go to second question. The second question says that one end of a 50 centimeters length of wire is attached to a support, a load is attached to free end uh, which wire, uh, wire which extended by 2 millimeters, which of the following is the strain for the length of the wire. Now we know students strain will be extension over original length and here you can see given in two different uh, units. So therefore, you must be very careful to convert into one unit. You can do centimeters to millimeters, so millimeters to centimeters or both to meters. Strain will be extension over original length. You can say delta x o x. So I have converted here millimeters to meters, centimeters to meters. So answer comes 0 0.04. Answer is A. And we'll go to third question. The third question says the stiffness constant that is k and the young modulus are terms used in physics. Which row of the table shows the correct application of these terms? Stiffness constant applies to object. Stiffness constant we can apply for object, different, different objects we can apply uh, stiffness constant whereas Young modulus applies to material. Material to material uh, we know that Young modulus will change. So Young modulus is applying to material. So answer will be stiffness constant applies for objects whereas Young modulus only applies to materials. Therefore answer will be D. And we'll go to question number four. The question number four says a graph of stress against strain up to breaking point is drawn for four samples. Uh, you can see that uh, A, B, C, D. Which sample of wire has both a low elastic limit and large plastic deformation or plastic region? So low elastic limit will be always the stress value should be less. You can see the way shown the graphs. 
uh, as well as large plastic deformation means it should go more to the uh, ex, uh, strain side. The graph should spread to the strain side. Then low elastic limit will be here C and D, C and D, uh, but uh, we can't take here D because D has less plastic deformation whereas C has more plastic deformation. So, answer will be C. Answer is C. Uh, here you can see A is not correct because it has high elastic limit. B is not correct, it has high elastic limit, uh, small region of plastic deform, uh, deformation. Whereas D is not correct, the last graph because it has small plastic deformation. Question number 5, the area under each of the following graphs represents physical quantity. For which graph is the area under graph not equal to work done? First one, force displacement. Area will be, we know that half force into displacement in another way half force means average force into displacement, it is work done or energy stored. So, uh, you can see that uh, the B force into extension, that is also you can say force into extension gives uh, elastic strain energy, that is also work done. Power into time, power into time it can be mechanical work done, so P into T gives W. So, a, B, C both, all three will be work done, but D will be area stress into strain, half stress into strain gives energy density. We have learned that in our theory classes. So, answer will be not equal means answer should be D. You can see that the all the information it is given here, you can just clearly read it. Then we are going to learn question number now, I'm going to do question number 6. A force if was applied to compress a spring by distance x, a second spring of double the stiffness, k value will be double 2k, was compressed by the same distance, x will be same. Which of the following gives the magnitude of the force applied to the second string? So, they are asking uh, force. So, answers given here. Uh, 4F, 2F, F, F by 2. So, first spring force applied F, uh, compressed length will be X. Second one, uh, same stiff, uh, double the stiffness, but extension, uh, compression will be same X. They are asking which force needed to compress by the same distance. We see how we can work this. So, we can use this uh, by using uh, Hooke's law if equals k delta x. So, since they have given instead of delta x, x, so f equals k x. So, when the k doubles, uh, you can see it comes f dash, the new force will be f dash that is 2 k x, but k x product is equal to f, k x product is equal to uh, f. So, the place of k is you can substitute f, then you get f dash is equal to 2 f, f dash is equal to 2 f. So, that means the new force will be double the previous one. So, therefore, answer will be B. <coughs> then question number 7, <coughs> question number 7 says, a length of steel wire is fixed at one end and increasing force is applied to the other end of the wire. The force extension graph for the wire is shown. You can see the graph and they have given three special points R, Q, P. The question asking which row of the table identified points P, Q and R of the graph. 
So, you can see they have given elastic limit, limit of proportion to yield point. Now, students you know this one we have learned many times. So, R is the point first almost in the straight line part R should be the limit of proportionality. Then Q will be just above R that is elastic limit and P will be yield point, P will be yield point. So, uh, the answer will be here P will be yield point, then Q elastic limit, answer C, answer will be C, P is yield point, Q is elastic limit, R will be limit of proportionality. Then we are going to learn question number 8. Now, we see that how we can uh, answer for this question, this is a long question. A human knee contains a tendon which connects muscles to bones. The graph shows the variation of force with extension in the tendon. You can see uh, when the force increases, extension also increases. Explain whether the tendon obeys Hooke's law. You can see that graph is not a straight line through origin. So, therefore, it does not obey Hooke's law. So, the answer will be does not obey Hooke's law as force is not directly proportional to extension and the graph is not a straight line through origin. Since it is a two marks question, better to explain Hooke's law and then you can talk about this not a straight line through origin. And we see that how calculate the stress in the tendon at the force of 4000 Newton, cross sectional area is given. So, it is a direct question, stress will be force over cross sectional area, but in the, this is a 2 marks question, the a cross sectional area 101 millimeter squared, you have to convert to meter squared. So, 1 millimeter 10 to the power minus 3, then millimeter squared will be minus 6. So, 4000 divide by 101 into 10 to the power minus 3, minus 6. So, the answer will be minus 3 squared that is minus 6. So, answer will be 3.96 into 10 to the power 7 Pascal or Newton per meter squared. The C part calculate the strain in the tendon at a force of 4000 Newton unstretched length of the tendon is given 43 millimeters. Now, in this question when you answer in students the tendon the force is given 4000 Newton from the graph the force extension graph when the force is uh, 4000 Newton you can just easily read the extension from the graph and then you can find uh, strain is equal to delta x over x that is 2.3 divided by 43 millimeters. It should be both should be in same units, otherwise the units will not cancel out and your answer you can give in decimal form or uh, power form or standard form. <coughs> then uh, D part, a website state that there is a small risk of damage in the tendon when loading from jump. The force required to damage this tendon is 10,000 Newton. Use the graph to estimate the energy transfer to the tendon when this force is applied. So, you can just read it energy transfer from the graph we can work out area under the graph. So, here will be the area under the graph when you are working out you can see that from your diagram. So, triangle part is there trapezium part is there. So, you can work out triangle part as half base into height, trapezium as half a plus b into h. So, these values you can carefully check it and then you can work out the conversion is very important millimeters to meters. So, then you will get 11.1 joules. Then they are asking calculate the energy that must be transferred when person lands from uh, lands from a jump of height 0 0.5, mass of the person is given. So, mass of the person given means they are asking 
energy transferred that is MGH, MGH. So, we can work out gravitational potential energy delta E gravitational MG delta H MGH. So, when you work it out you are getting 319 joules. The question asks is suggests why the risk of damage in this tendon is small. So, you can give the answers here the four possibilities are there some energy is transferred to other parts of the body when you jump the energy will be spread to other parts of the body it will prevent complete injury. The force is spread over the body parts the when you jump the force will spread over body parts. Then bending the knee when you bend the knee what will happen reduces force bending knee. So, increase in time taken to land reduce force. So, when you are just uh, take more time to reduce your force. Uh, so, when you are taking more time to land and taking more time is we know if is inversely proportional to T that is from Newton's second law. So, the time is increasing means what will happen the force will reduce. So, you can see that one of that answer you can write here uh, how the force is reducing. So, and then they are asking that uh, this damaging is less. <coughs> so, we are going to do now question number 9. A student carried out an experiment to determine the young modulus of copper. She used the apparatus below to observe the position of a marker as a copper wire extend under uh, increase applied forces. This I explain in my theory class. Uh, you can see that the diagram given the clamp stand will be there G clamp then two blocks wire marker. Marker means you can use a small tape the copper wire and meter rule to measure the length pulley and applied force. The question asking describe how the diameter of the wire should have been determined. You can see that the diameter you can measure use a micrometer screw gauge and then you can measure the diameter from three positions of the wire, three positions of the wire or three different orientations of the wire and calculate the mean diameter. You can find the mean diameter that is d average will be d 1 plus d 2 plus d 3 divided by 3. Then the question asking uh, the student calculated the extension of the copper wire for each applied load. She then plot a graph of load against extension. So, the question will be determine a value for young modulus of copper. Original length of copper wire 2.4 it is given diameter of copper wire given 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters. Then the cross sectional area will be A equals pi d squared over 4. You can see the calculation uh, 4.15 into 10 to the power minus 8 meters squared. Then gradient of linear section, we can find the gradient. Uh, so, m is equal to F4 delta x. So, force over delta x means in another way it is like spring constant. You can see that. 2.24 into 10 to the power 3 Newton per meters or stiffness constant. Then Young modulus equation we can write uh, E equals sigma over epsilon that is F 4 A into X over delta X. So, I have written here F 4 delta X separately times X over A. F 4 delta X is the gradient or uh, stiffness constant. So, F 4 delta X place you can substitute your calculated value and x and a already we know you can find e. You can say 4 delta x value be calculated from the graph x given a calculated and you will get young modulus after substituting 1.3 into 10 power 11. 
then C part explain why the sample of wire used in this experiment should be long and thin. This is a 6 marks question, uh, we see that how we can answer. So, when you answer in this one it is easy to take a, a wire and just think this equation E equals sigma or epsilon F over A divide delta x over x and E equals F x over A delta x and delta x will be F x over A E. When you look this equation you can say that for given force delta x is directly proportional to x that means extension directly proportional to the initial length. Similarly, for given force Young modulus is constant for given force uh, delta x is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area. So, those two idea we can use because long and thin right then you can say this is the answer for longer wire uh, extension will be larger if you use because we know that delta x directly proportional to x if you use a longer wire we know same applied force delta x directly proportional to x. So, we will get large extension large extension means percentage uncertainty of delta x or x will be less percentage uncertainty will be less right. Then we see what is why they are using thinner wire. If you use thin wire we know thin wire delta x and a inversely proportion wire thin means you can say the extension will be large because they are inversely proportion for thinner wire delta x will be larger for same force. So, therefore, uh, we can we will get a delta x uh, high value that means percentage uncertainty of delta x will be low. So, therefore, if you are getting this uh, percentage uncertainty less means in the experiment we can use long and thin wire. So, therefore, during the experiment we can use small loads, small loads when you are using the automatically extensions will be less. If you are using long and thin wire uh, we can use small loads. So, these uh, 7 points uh, very important. So, you have to remember how to answer this type of question. And elastic uh, the question says question number 10 an elastic cord was fixed between the ends of an air track and a glider. The glider was pulled to the right giving the elastic cord an extension delta x. Uh, then the question the glider was released and it is moved to the left a light gate was used to measure the maximum velocity of the glider. Uh, this was repeated for different values of x delta x when you change speed also will change. The student obtained the following results you can see that the graph shows maximum velocity with extension almost straight line. The question asking the principle of conservation of energy predicts that the graph should be a straight line through origin for the range of values of delta x, they vary delta x uh, and the elastic cord obeys Hooke's law. So, they are using delta x different values and finding b. Explain this prediction, we see that how we can get the relationship between delta x and v. Uh, we know elastic potential energy or elastic strain energy uh, will be given by E elastic half F delta x, then from Hooke's law F equals k delta x, then F place you can substitute k delta x. So, then it comes E elastic equals k delta x squared. When the glider is released elastic potential energy is converted to k E. So, E elastic will be E k last uh, energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So, half k delta x squared equals half m v squared half cancels. So, m v squared is equal to k delta x squared. So, v squared will be k over m delta x squared. So, v will be equal to square root k over m times delta x. So, then uh, k and m are constants 
k and m are constant, spring constant and the mass. So therefore, this is like y equals mx. How the speed varies with delta x? It's a linear form. So if you draw a graph, it's a straight line. It's a straight line graph. The question asking next, determine the stiffness k of the elastic cord, k they are asking and mass of the glider is given. So you can calculate the gradient of the graph. The gradient we can select two far points and y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, you can find the gradient and that gradient will be equal to uh, square root m over k. You can see gradient uh, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, the unit meters cancel out. So then gradient will be only per second, 8.67 per second. This value will be equal to gradient. The so gradient is square root k over m in that formula. If you square, it is g squared, gradient squared will be k over m. I have used the gradient here as g because m also involved in the equation. So then k value will be g squared times m. m already we know 300 grams convert into kilograms. g we calculated 8.67 squared. So answer will be 22.6 kilogram per second squared or Newton per meters. So spring constant will be 22.6 Newton per meters. Then B part, when the glider was moved to the right by more than 0 0.5 meters, the graph begin to curve. Explain why the shape of the graph is change. So if the graph is getting curved means it does not be in uh, Hooke's law, it has passed the limit of proportionality. So answer will be limit of proportionality uh, exceeded. So extension is not proportional to applied force. So Hooke's law no longer apply for the rubber cord. That's why straight line part getting curved. Thank you.